What do you think would happen if you set off an atomic bomb next to a tank? Well, wonder no more, because in 1953, in the Australian outback, the British and Australians found out. This tank in particular was a Centurion Mark III, serial number 169041. Built in 1951 and sold to Australia in 1952, where it spent the early part of its life being used as a training tank. So far, so normal. In 1953, it was decided that it would become a sacrificial lamb. Leaving military equipment near an atomic explosion was not out of the ordinary. However, this particular tank was a top-of-the-line piece of hardware with hardly 500 miles on the clock. Regardless, the tank's fate was set. Just to get the tank to the test site was an epic adventure, with the tank having to tow its own transport truck across some of the journey. The tank was driven under its own power for the final 170 miles. Emu Field was later decided by the government to be too remote for subsequent tests. At the test site, the tank was prepped for its final moments, being loaded with ammo, a fake crew, testing equipment and fuel. Its parking spot was a mere 500 yards from the epicentre, which might sound far, but honestly, would you want to be that close to an atomic bomb? On the 15th of October, the tank's engine and generator was started up and all hatches closed. The human crew left to watch the explosion at a much safer distance. The Totem 1 bomb was set off with a yield of 9 kilotons. When the crew returned to check their tank, they found it had been moved a mere 5 feet. Its side plates were blown off, no big deal. Parts of the tank were sandblasted and the engine had gone off, although this was due to it running out of fuel. It was decided that if the crew inside the tank were not mannequins and were their living compatriots, they would have been killed by the shockwave. Three days later, it was decided to fire up the tank and bring it back to Wimera. The tank drove part of the way but through a rod and was then dragged back the rest of the way with a horribly inadequate trailer. It was only then that the tank was decontaminated. The crew, who had endured the trip out to the test site, waited around for two months for the test explosion in the middle of nowhere, then drove the newly radiated tank several hundred miles, didn't even think of the risks. No one gave him any protection from the Centurion. None of the crew even expressed any concern until the tank was returned back to base where officials told him to park it as far away as possible. I mean, that would start to worry me. Before the tank was shipped back to... Oh, do, do excuse my pronunciation. Pukapunya. Pukapunya. It was tested and found, but luckily it wasn't greatly contaminated. This was fought due to the tank's thick armour. This wasn't the end of the story for the tank. It had a new engine installed and served as a training vehicle for a number of years before it was upgraded and sent to the 1st Armoured Regiment. The same 1st Armoured Regiment that went to the peaceful and quiet place during the 1960s and 70s known as the Vietnam War. Whilst it served, it was hit by an RPG, injuring but not killing the crew, and the tank carried on doing what it did best, being invincible. invincible. After a while, it was eventually sent back to Australia, where it sat in storage and eventually being used for parades and finally being put on display. But this is where the story possibly takes a rather sad turn. The tank did everything and more it said it would do on the box. It survived. The main legacy it left behind, possibly, is cancer. It was reported in the Geelong Advertiser in 1990 that 12 out of the 16 crew that worked on a tank post-totem test have died of cancer, though this is impossible to say 100% that the tank was the cause. It was tested to be safe at least two times, but that shows we possibly don't know as much about radiation as we should, and also decontamination in 1953 is probably not as good as it would be today. It seems that this tank might have been more dangerous to its crew than the enemy it fought. Cause of all evil. This story unfortunately gives credence to this theory.